Catherine, thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we get to interview you. I would love if you could introduce yourself. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, My name is Lauren Hackney. I'm from Brisbane, Australia. And together with my two boys, we created, wrote and illustrated our family bedtime tale. Love that. I would love if you could tell us more about what your books are about. Yes. So this, I can't take all the credit. Um, My boys at the time when we started the story were really small. They were two and four. And this is how we put them to bed. So when I tell you the storyline, I, I wish it all came from me. It, it doesn't. <laughs> um, so we started it um, as a when my husband worked night shift, put the kids to bed, and, and they came up with an idea that they owned a lolly shop. And at the time, because they were so small, um, it was a way of teaching them colours as well. So red, blue, green, and then also mixing mixing a little bit of mischief where because they were two and four um the lollies started out as you know if it was red pick the flavor and you know my four-year-old son would go mint and you know it's not something you would associate right red and green uh well red and mint um and then when they started getting older the lollies um became magical and and when they started getting a little bit older than that we thought well you know what mischief can kids or mischief or magic can kids create with all these magical lollies and then when they got older still because this this went on for years we decided to then think of where the magic might have come from and so so that the storyline is my boys have a lolly shop lots of magical powers lots of you know magic and mischief but then the further books in the series jump into where the magic came from. And you can kind of tell as the story grows the age my kids were when the story started. Love that. What inspired you to write your books? Um, simply circumstance. So um, when when the pandemic hit in 2020, like everyone, you know, uh, we all had to stay at home and be grounded. Well, I worked in aviation at the time and I... I was in the same company for 16 odd years and we were all grounded. And it was one of those times where if I didn't if I didn't think a certain way, this book wouldn't have happened because it was such a heartbreaking time. I found an alternate job that, you know, it with the minimal skills I had, because being in the same job for 16 years, it's not like I upskilled and, you know, did five different careers. With the job I found, it wasn't really enough to pay the bills. It wasn't job satisfaction. It was it was casual work. It wasn't solid work. And I decided to think and go, well, this can't this can't be what life's about. Let's 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 write our bedtime story. Because it turned out that after telling it to friends on a camping trip, people loved it and kids loved it. And I didn't think it was anything special until until I told it to a group of friends when we went camping. And then everyone said, oh, my gosh, you've got to write this. So the pan- when the pandemic happened and and all things went pear-shaped, you could say, um, my boys and I used this time to sit together at the table, put the story together, think of names for the characters, illustrate the characters. And, and in all fairness, my, my boys were, the attention spans weren't great, <laughs> like, um, I probably got maximum 25 minutes out of them before they wanted to go play with their Lego and play with their toys. Um, but that's that's sort of how it it actually happened was the pandemic grounded my career. So I had time at night to do something I never thought I could do. Love that. When you were writing your books, who were you thinking of when it comes to who your books are for? Oh, children. Oh, it because that camping trip when I told the story, um, it was every night those kids wanted to hear the story again and again and again. And I I remember looking at their eyes getting wider and their smiles getting bigger. And you know when you you know when you're looking at a child's face who's just dreaming and imagining and you're thinking, wow, because as adults, we don't do that really, do we? Because we're too busy. Life gets in the way, right? Those moments are really magical. 
So when, when I was at the table and I was thinking to my kids, right, if you could float in a bubble, what do you reckon would happen with that? And if you could be invisible, what do you reckon would happen with that? If you could swim under the water, just like a turtle, gee, what do you reckon could happen there? And if you could climb the tallest building in Brisbane, what possible mischief could happen? And the wondering and the just, just the magic of thinking where their minds went, that is when, when I thought, right, I want to write this for kids because I don't, I don't mind if adults love the story and enjoy the story and get lost in, in the story, but I think kids are only kids for a small time. If you could, if you could bring a little bit of magic and make them think of things they could do with all those powers, you know, why not? So I, I did think of kids when I wrote this story. I love that. And I believe you touched on this next question, but how long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start? Yeah. Oh, wow. I I didn't grow up to be a writer. <laughs> I feel really bad. It just so happens that how things have turned out, I want to be one now. Um, but I remember as, as a little kid, I played lots of musical instruments. Like I played the organ, I did the piano, I did the saxophone, I did percussion, um, and I, I learned basic guitar because once you start on one, I found it easy to pick up on others, you know. And I I didn't grow up anywhere fancy where it was kind of you used the resources you had, you know. Um, and so when I was younger, I wanted to be a music teacher because I found the way different notes sounded and when you put different notes together, can create lots of different moods and lots of um, feelings. And, and you, like, I remember starting to sort of write my own little bits of music because I just found that stuff fascinating. And then I grew up a little bit and discovered travel. And then travel did the same thing, right? It kind of all the different cultures, all the different religions, all the different ways people lived, all the different environments, all the different weather conditions like it all fascinates me absolutely fascinates me that we live on one big planet and there's so much going on and it all can somehow work together so I then discovered travel and it, I was spellbound by it but along the way I guess it was just when I had my children finding the different ways of being creative with them because I guess I've been always on that creative side, you know, learning lots of music when I was little, traveling and loving all the creativeness there. And then when my hubby would go to work at night time, my boys share a room. So this was easy. I, you know, push the beds together a little bit, lie in between them, and we would make our own stories up. And so that's kind of how I started storytelling. But it was the pandemic and the heartbreak of you know, do I have a job anymore? Am I ever going back to this? Is it ever going to be the same? Those heartbreaking moments were then were then overtaken by writing. And I, I say to so many people, you know, you can find the good in bad because there were days where I was heartbroken and writing this story with my children saved the day. Love that. What is your schedule like when you are writing a book? Oh, now? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> because at the, at the moment, it's five o'clock in the morning in Brisbane, Australia, when we're talking, and I'm already dressed and ready to go to work. So I, um, I, I'll leave to go to work before six o'clock. And so I'll get up about an hour earlier now and put in a good solid hour before anyone wakes up while the sun is just dawning. Or the morning birds are just waking because I love that sound. That's a great sound. Um, and the colours of the morning sky are just so, they're just breaking that beautiful violet turning pink and orange. Beautiful time of day for my brain to be sparking ideas and try my best to get them all out <laughs> in the hour I set aside. Um, so that that's what I do now. But it was it, it just happened so naturally before, um, for years telling the story with my children because we published it when they were six and eight 
So two and four and six and eight is many years to tell a story. It was quite easy to to, to write it all out because we told it so many times. It wasn't a fresh idea. It was a rehashed idea um, that we had created. It was just then we had the pandemic time to to do that. Amazing. What do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused? Oh, I, oh, because I like to laugh a lot. So I need to be in a fun, happy mood to write fun, happy children's books. Um, if I've had a stressful day at work or if, um, if, or if my hubby's not well or something's happened, I don't force it. I just, I just kind of think I'm not going to put the pressure on myself. This is this is when things happen just naturally, it just happens naturally for me. I just have to be careful of those moments where I'm at the dentist with my mouth open and I think of something and I can't write it down. Or if I'm scanning my groceries at the grocery store and there's already a massive lineup and I can't stop to go, hey, I'm just going to put this in my phone. Um, it's it's those moments that creep up on me now that I'm just learning are all part of it too. So, yes, I put aside time in the morning before I start my day, but, gee, ideas love to pop up, don't they, at unexpected places? Love that. What is your favourite writing snack and drink? Oh, I'm a big fan of tea and water. Um, I'm pretty boring that way. <laughs> Um, sometimes I'll have a very weak coffee because I'm, I, if I have a proper cafe bought coffee, I get a little bit hyperactive. <laughs> I'm a bit caffeine sensitive. Um, so that would have to be it. But first thing in the morning, I, I love fruit and I love oats. I don't know what it is. My tummy always asks for that kind of stuff, regardless. Um, it's just in the summer, in the summertime here in Brisbane can be quite hot and sticky. So sometimes a nice hot bowl of oats. Mm, that <laughs> so then I usually go for the nice fresh summer fruits um but usually that's what my tummy asks for for first thing when I've set aside my writing time love it what type of books do you personally enjoy reading ones that make me think because I can relate to kids who are reluctant readers I was not a reluctant reader as a kid I had my favorite little books like anyone else but it just so happened when I was in school and I was made to read certain books that I just simply wasn't interested in. That that was that that was like you know walk, pushing things uphill. It was just painful. So when when I was a kid, I've just noticed that things that made me think and, and question are still things I read today. I actually really like some of the science books my kids bring home, and I love the fact books, and I love I love this book. Um, uh, gosh, it's about um, kids who, so rebel, uh, good night stories for rebel girls, that is one of them, and there's one for boys where it's um, boy, oh, gosh, I can't remember the title now, how embarrassing, but it, it's all these true stories of, of, of kids or people who just went out and did things, and and they've done amazing things for these for this world, and they're, they're the kind of stories I still love to read and they're books designed for kids. <laughs> love it. Are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer? Yeah, some of my local ones. So there's there's some, the, the writing community is amazing now that I'm like, you know, part of it. And, I, and now that I feel like a lot, because when I first started, I remember like going to author things locally and there's amazing authors in my community that are doing amazing things and I, I remember at the time going oh I don't belong here <laughs> but then once you start talking to them and you hear their journey and you hear of how they started and you hear that they've had the same feelings too and you kind of go oh wow I'm really inspired by you because you're right here you're in front of me you're talking to me and, and you've got like 16 odd books published and you're, you're hearing of their ups and downs. So so I would have to say my my local ones who I've seen them put in so much work and and also realising that it's still hard for them, even though they're well along their journey, they still have the same, same types of publishing struggles. So I'd have to say my local ones. 
inspire me. Love that. What books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all-time favorite? Yeah, I really liked Judy Bloom, Enid Blyton, and, and I loved um, the Grug series when I was really little. I uh, don't know if you've heard of Grug. It's really Aussie. It's um, a very simple pitch book about a tree that turns into a, a like a, a Aussie tree that turns into this particular character. And this particular character is just really cute. And he's got like a snake carpet snake that's a friend and it's, I think it's amazing. But that was when I was a little kid. I loved Grug. And then things like, you know, the Babysitter's Club when I was older, Sweet Belly High when I was older, loved Judy Bloom, Super Fudge, loved it. Um, yeah, so just just simple reads where I could just, just escape for half an hour, you know. Love that. On the other side of that, now as an adult, what are your favorite series or authors that if they come out with something, you automatically grab it? Autobiographies at the moment because I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by people as well. Um, the, the latest one I bought was Dave Grohl's Storyteller. I thought that was good. And I've bought, um, I've actually got on order um, this, uh, the book that inspired Ewan McGregor to do his uh, Long Way Around series, I think it was Trips of Jupiter. Uh, Travels of Jupiter. Um, so I've got that one on order because there's I find I find to remind myself that people out there are doing amazing things and have done amazing things. To escape in fiction, not so much at the moment. I'm really captivated by people. Love that. What would you tell someone just starting out with reading again? Oh, find something that really resonates with you because I don't read the books my friends read and I remember talking to my girlfriends and they still talk so one goes to a book club and one said to me oh my gosh you've got to come to this book club and I'm like oh my gosh I don't want to read those books um that was my inside the head book by the way um so I I think trying my best to fit into something that wasn't for me I didn't want maybe not want to read but when I started picking up my husband's books of some autobiography, some science books, um, his, you know, different genres I, I, I'm not used to. I remember thinking, yeah, 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 actually, I really want to read this stuff because there's so many genres. And also what people don't realise is if you're reading a recipe book, that's reading as well. If you're reading a how-to book, if you're learning about different plants, that's reading it doesn't have to be fiction or nonfiction or an autobiography. If you're simply reading a how-to book, like I've got uh, Learning French for Dummies, you know, the Four Dummies series. Um, my husband's got Sailing for Dummies. Like we've got Coding for Dummies. Like you're, you're learning, but you're actually reading as well. Those books, it's, a, it's like a two-for-one, you know, you're learning and you're reading those types of books. So I'm saying anyone who's getting back into reading, just be open because you don't have to read what everyone else around you was reading. And it's okay to read what you want to read. Love that. What would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? Be brave. Just do it. Because I know what it's like to not think I can do this. I'm very lucky to have a group of people who support me to do it and keep me accountable. I'm very lucky. Well, my, my closest seven are like a, a group of cheerleaders, you could say, like my husband and my friends. You know, how's that book going? Oh, yeah, what, what are you up to? What, what part of that book is? So send me the draft. I want to read that. Very lucky to have that. If you don't have that, it's the hardest thing you're ever going to do because imposter syndrome will rear its ugly head. It's going to say to you, you know, look at that other person. They write better than this. Or you're just a drop in the ocean. Who's going to notice you, right? Those those little voices are going to rear their ugly heads and you've got to just not, you've got to be stronger than them because anyone who wants to write a book, you've got a story to tell and everyone's story deserves to be told. So just put the pen to paper. You can't edit an, at an empty page. You can't. And one day you're going to only write 50 words and that's okay. And the next day you might not write anything at all. The next after that you might write 2,000 words, but you're doing it. So be nice to yourself and just start because you just don't know what, what could come of a manuscript. 
Love that. What's one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? That I sleepwalk. <laughs> I'm happy to say it. My poor husband and children. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a little quirky thing about me because when I was a shift worker before COVID, I'd always, I would always be up at odd hours because the airline industry is one of those industries where, you know, you have to start work. You have to be at the airport ready to go 3 a.m. in the morning. So naturally, I was getting up, you know, quarter to two, um, getting ready for work. I, I was up. And I think my brain has just been trained now to be up because I, I work during the day. And it's something that I've just developed something I do and now that I'm no longer in like working at an airport uh working till all hours of the morning waiting for that last aircraft to come in you know so if people want to know anything weird about me that they don't expect yeah I sleepwalk <laughs> love it is there anything you would like to say or add that imagination isn't just for kids so I, I will admit, before before the pandemic, I was happily working in a shift environment where some sometimes your shift pattern was six days on, two days off, six days on, two days off, six days on, four days off, right? Or you might be called in because a particular aircraft's coming in and you're licensed to drive that bridge and open that door, you know, like very busy. And my kids do lots of sport and trying to be, you know, a mum, a daughter, a friend, a wife, all those different hats. I I didn't I didn't have I didn't have time to sit there and think what I could do with my life because firstly I was really happy and then secondly I was just you know life got in the way then the pandemic hit and absolutely was heartbreaking to no longer have the job I had it was awful but that gave me time to be alone with my thoughts and some thoughts some days were really sad because I was heartbroken Then other days I kept thinking, well, what could I do with this time? Because in the first few months, no one could leave the house. There was no, there was no camping trip we did, which made me realize what a a great story this is, right? Like for months, we were all just stuck at home. And I just kept thinking, wow, what could I do with my life? I thought, oh, what would I do now? What should I get into education? Should I should I study nursing? Like my imagination started ticking because I had the time for it to tick. But then months later when the, you know, borders slowly opened up and, and we could go on this little local camping trip because, you know, that's as far as you could go. It was like I think it was an, a, a few Ks out of town or something. Um, that's when I found out, oh, this story is actually good because all the kids with us want to hear it. And then the, the imagination grew and grew and grew and grew. So I guess what I'm trying to say to, to a lot of people is dreaming about change and dreaming about possibility and dreaming about making a dream come true something you never thought could happen that's not just for kids that's for adults too and I suggest give it a go because for me I did and now I can't believe I've got three published books and I'm selling them worldwide and I'm talking to Courtney in the USA like (laughs) just do it (laughs) love that where is the best place for readers to find your books? I know some people love signed copies. Is that an option and the best place to connect with you? Okay, so the best place I've learned um, to buy them online is places like Amazon, Booktopia, uh, those types of places because um, I've just learned that international postage isn't always great. Like I've had some books go missing and, and what have you. I find Amazon and Booktopia at the pretty consistent and reliable um as far as signed copies go again I, I don't I don't mind I have my um contact details on my socials you can contact me through my Instagram through my Facebook or through my website but again I've, I've had people request them and sometimes once or twice the post hasn't hit the mark so I don't want to promise things to people I can't deliver um but then if you also just want to reach out connect ask me about magical lollies and you know just and have kind of conversations as to you know how how to uh, I guess not get where I've 
gotten because I don't think I've, I haven't hit the big time or anything. But like, you know, if you've got questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. So uh, my Instagram is lbe.hackney. My Facebook is facebook.com slash the lolly shop. And I've got a website, lbehackney.com. Ask me anything. I'm pretty open. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we got to interview you. We'll be sure to drop those links in the show notes. That way everyone can find you. And again, thank you so much. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you for having me on on your show. It was so good.